Welcome back. The South Dakota State football team heads west this week for a game at Montana State on Saturday night. We will have it live on Midco Sports Network right after the UND game. But our Tom Neiman sat down with Jackrabbit head coach John Stiglmeyer this week to talk about Rice Krispie Bars, Taryn Christian, and the Jacks game coming up this weekend. All right, Coach, 1-0 after the win over Duquesne. And let's start with the tradition, Rice Krispie Bars made by your wife after, after another victory. Yeah, she makes uh, 11 to 12 dozen. Uh, from scratch, uh, every game and every game we win, and this one I think this victory put her over twenty thousand. So she's a workhorse and uh, the true head coach in our family. All right, and you're expecting another grandchild sometime soon. Not yet, but soon, right? Uh, we're, we're expecting, or not we, but our daughter's expecting uh, in November, and she's a football coach's daughter, so she wants us to get a bye so she doesn't have to miss a game <laughs> for the birth. That should work out fine, we hope. All right, talk about your performance against Duquesne, and we see the game, and we, we think Taryn was okay, and Jake was great, and some other things. We see what we see. How do you grade performance on your guys after a game? You know, the, the first game, there's always uh, what, what appears to be some things you didn't work on hard enough, and I didn't see that. I really didn't. Uh, I saw a bunch of young guys playing uh, their best football up to this point, uh, some guys playing their first football and doing some good things. We weren't perfect, uh, but I think we were ahead of a lot of teams for their first game. So I was excited about it. All right. Eric Eisen, this is the offensive coordinator, your offensive coordinator, talks about running perfect plays and not worrying about the numbers and things like that. Did you run some perfect plays in this game? I, you know, we didn't talk about that. So I, I think we maybe came close to that. But a perfect play is all the fat guys taking the exact – correct steps having pads on the right guys everybody blocking everybody or running the right routes uh that is hard when we used to do that there, there may be four in a game of 80 plays yeah. so that, that that is playing at an elite level that is the goal though that to run those plays perfectly offensively defensively be in the right spots that's the goal right? it is it is and i've asked our coaches to grade at what i call a championship level uh and and what that is for us i want them to grade effort which is a choice, and then I want to grade the mental effort. You know, did you do the right thing? And we are all those plays, two things for every guy and every play. There was uh, uh, like 5,000 opportunities in the game when they mm -hmm. graded it. We graded out at a 97%, so pretty good. 97. All right. Um, early in this game, first time you guys got the football, you took some shots downfield. People love seeing this, but what did you see? You finally got one to Adam Anderson, and what, what were you seeing early on against Duquesne? Well, we felt we were going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage, and so, uh, you know, you're not worried about a safety coming over the top, and we got that against Jake on the first one and overthrew him a little bit. You know, and some people would say, well, Taron was off. That's a hard throw to, yeah. to make, and, and uh, normally when you get it close to Jake, he's going to make that play. Well, he didn't get it close enough. And Taron doesn't, I mean, it wasn't, he wasn't a perfect performance for him, but how was Taron Christian in this first game? Uh, I would say uh, Taron would grade himself harder than his position coach yeah. would. Uh, very hard on himself, uh, expects perfection, did some really good things with the ball, uh, ran the ball well when we asked him, or when he scrambled, really, we didn't really ask him. So I think he played uh, uh, where, he, where he ended up last year. Third quarter of this game, you guys go on a drive, and I think you threw it one time and just ran it, ran it, ran it with Brady. And you need to be able to do this. This was kind of fun to see. We need, you need to do it. Uh, we had some linemen that were just getting some of their first reps. Uh, you know, if you can control the ball running, it, it's a long day for the opposing, the whole team, not just their defense. And so I was excited about doing that. I also think the score differential said we should do that as, as a, as a sportsman-like uh, team. And the running game is not, it's not a forgotten part of the game, but you, it kind of gets overshadowed a little bit by you guys throwing it around a little bit, and it shouldn't be. Well, it does. You know, you throw a ball up and a guy makes a one-handed catch. Yeah, yeah. You throw it up and he steals the ball from the corner, and all of a sudden you're a passing team. We want to be able to run the football. All right, on to Montana State now, and a lot of people saw their game against Washington State uh, this past Saturday, and it's hard to tell in a game like that, but what's your, your thought on, in general on Montana State coming up? Well, my first thought is I'm glad we're not playing Washington State good, because that yeah. defense was uh, really aggressive. Uh, they're a good football team. Yeah, you know they don't got to play us defensively like they played Washington State. They played uh, almost prevent uh, pass defense the whole game, saying you're not going to throw it over our head. They're not going to play us like that. They're going to they're going to defend the run and the pass and try to find a way to double 
uh, Goddard at some some point and, and Winicky at some point. Offensively, they're they're good. They really are good. And and that quarterback is a special player. So we need to be able to stop him and and be able to shut down the the, the option, which is what they want to run. Yeah, a lot of stuff going on in the backfield. A lot of stuff to pay attention to and not get fooled by, right? Yeah, they a lot of a lot of not gimmicks, but a lot of looks that they're really running the similar plays. And uh, I mean, we went through the you know, we've had their whole season from last year, so they did a lot of stuff last year. All right. And just keep working. Back to work for you today and, and just back to work this week and working on things. What, working on yeah. a lot of things yeah, still, right? Yeah, without a doubt. I, I, I talked to our coaches this morning in a staff meeting, and I said, who in your position group is not – naturally motivated you know he needs a, a prod once in a while and they they kind of daydream for a while and I said I bet 80% of them you know because we've had some success we had a long fall camp I said it's your job to get these guys motivated to keep working hard appreciate it coach super thanks thank you so much Tom and coach Stig again Midco SM will be bringing that game back from Bozeman and will join it in progress as soon as the UND Missouri State game wraps up Coming up next, a quick preview of our live game tonight. Southeast Southwest Minnesota State at Minnesota State Moorhead. Jody Norsett and David Brown give us the lowdown on this NSIC matchup. You're watching Midco Sports tonight.